Denny Crum's team was uh, awfully tough for the University of Dayton Flyers tonight, folks, at UD Arena. This team is still just not ready for prime time. Some late, costly turnovers cost Dayton a chance to knock off a pretty good Louisville basketball team. Let's take you down to the University of Dayton Arena. Hall of Fame coach Denny Crum had a chance to see his team almost get rattled early on. Nate Johnson with the layup right there, but the Flyers started getting hot from the outside. Kobe Turner, the big senior, buries the three, and then it's Turner again. He never saw a shot he didn't love. Bingo! The Flyer crowd was into this game. Louisville appeared to be in some trouble. Tony Stanley, top of the key for three. Tony Stanley to the right side. Open. Tony will shoot at any time. Could UD pull off the upset? Denny Crum trying to reshuffle the cards and get his troops regrouped to boot. Just before the half, big Alex Sanders lays it in. 37-34 UofL. Second half, big play right here. Mark Ashman drives, shoots, and scores. But he could not complete the three-point play. That made it 77 to 75. Everybody praying, just praying that Dayton would have a chance to tie this game at the end. They would. David Morris open for three for the tie. Boom! Just off the rim, the Flyers lose tonight. A tough one. I think we stepped up and we met him. We went toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. But it came down to, you know, who made plays at the end, and they out-executed us. You play 40 minutes hard, you know, and people don't care if you lose by one or lose by 30, you know. And the fact is, you lost. And, and I think this team played hard. You know, both teams went out hard. And, you know, I'm so proud of my guy. Uh, we made too many errors. Uh, in both halves uh, in this kind of basketball game and it finally came back to uh, to haunt us. 68-65 your final the Flyers play the UC Bearcats Sunday in the Rock and Roll shootout up to the Gund Arena. Levitt, if he has a problem, he may be too talented. He thinks he can do too much. David Morris takes it the other way, looking for Kobe Turner. Turner's going to spot Tony Stanley. Stanley's got to be pumped up. Flyers take an early lead. But Levitt did give Cleveland something to cheer about. Kenyon Martin, no. Levitt, Levitt, Tate. Only field goal of the day. Cincinnati trail by four at halftime. 20 seconds play. Dayton down one. Tony Stanley, no. Stanley. And a foul. Permits the foul to stop the clock. Dayton gets one more chance, down two, and they go in. You don't go in against Kenyon Martin and live to tell about it. Kenyon Martin, who may be the best defensive player in the country, certainly looked like that on Sunday as he blocked a couple of shots in the final couple of seconds there. Ends with 18 points, 13 rebounds, and three block shots. Bearcats have now defeated Dayton nine straight times this stretch, dating back to 1989. Dayton Flyers' record is their testament to the difficult schedule they've played. The RPI report says the Flyers have the fourth most difficult schedule in the country. Dayton's last four losses have been by a combined 10 points. Head coach Oliver Purnell said tonight's game was a must-win situation. To UD Arena, the Flyers taken on the DePaul Blue Demons. DePaul is led by three outstanding and talented young freshmen. Lance Williams, the big guy, gets it underneath and slams home two. He had 20 points to lead the Blue Demons. UD. Had some great perimeter shooting in this game. They shot 43% from three-point range in the first half. Edwin Young, Tony Stanley, then Kane Dalibo led the flyer attack. It would be a seven-point flyer lead at the half. In the second half, UD would put their trademark to use, defense. Yonta Holland, Tony Stanley come up with the steal. Then Stanley pushes it to David Morse, who lays it up and in. It is a 12-point flyer lead. Then more defense, Edwin Young. He gets a steal. He takes it the length of the court for the layup, and our cameraman, Mario Barson, takes the charge. Both would be okay. Oliver Purnell would not be happy with Mario's defense there. Scoreboard. Tony Stanley finishes the game shooting 50% from three-point range, leading the Flyers with 18 points. UD now stands at 500 on the year. Mario Barson from the locker room after the game. But tonight was a good team, um, excellent ball club, um, you know, and it really felt good to get back on a winning streak after two hard losses, and, and, and now we're getting ready for the Atlantic 10 League play. Um, well, I think that's, you know, that's got to be a mark of our team. You know, we're, we're not afraid of people. Um, you know, if guys want to strap it on it and go at it, you know, we're willing to do that. You know, we've got the guys and, you know, the strength to, to compete with teams. Arena, Oliver Purnell, looking on, his team played some pretty good defense. Alejandro Oliveras. Great little offensive move. He backs up Kobe, then hits the pretty baseline jumper. Just two of his 13 first-half points. 
He's got game. Oliveris, then again, a little give and go to Scott Harmatuck. Block, but there he is. Gets the rebound and puts it up and in. He finished the game with 18 points. UD did play pretty well in spurts. Check out Tony Stanley. Three crossovers, then hits the beautiful little jumper just before halftime. UD would lead 41-34. In the second half, this is our Joseph Automall series of the week. Andy Metzler with a crazy shot, then he's fouled. And he laughs because he says it's better to be lucky than good, but then he does it again. Our Joseph Automall player of the week is Andy Metzler and his 14 points. Scoreboard. I should note that the University of Dayton is offering a ticket buyback for this game tonight. You can either take your ticket stub or your unused ticket because of the level three weather conditions outside, and they will replace it with a level 400 seating for one of four games. You have to do this before January 31st. Like Coach said, we're, we're in first place now, and um, you know, the, our journey is just starting, you know. So now we just got to look for the next challenge, and, you know, and, um, but I think tonight was a good overall win tonight. I think we've, we've grown up a lot, you know, the last couple of weeks. We've played some, some unbelievable teams, and uh, you know, didn't always get the result that we wanted, but, you know, we learned a lot about ourselves, and, you know, we stuck together, and, and that went a long way to, to improving our chemistry. Tonight it was a good win. It's a good way to get started off in the, the A-10. Uh, we knew coming out, from the start that they were going to come at us hard because conference games are just flat out tough the awards and we didn't want to get into a war with them in the last six minutes so we found a way to put them away don's here now uh flyers in action tonight yeah and it was a, a pretty good crowd considering the the weather outside it started yeah. snowing about an hour too late to keep anybody away <laughs> those flyer fans they don't stay away anyway i tell you what one guy tonight though that really gave the Flyer faithful that showed up their money's worth, Andy Metzler. The old saying, get Mets, it pays. <laughs> it did tonight. The uh, junior guard from Kettering Fairmont did a number on St. Joe's. Let's take you over to the University of Dayton Arena with Rudy, trying to warm up the crowd. He doesn't care about the snow, man. He's ready to fly. And uh, well, Flyers uh, weren't flying early on. They were kind of grounded in the snow. St. Joe's, Eric Woods, the steal, drives and scores. The Hawks sort of the early lead. But the Flyers would take the lead finally with 6.50 to go in the first half. Edwin Young, the steal, drives to the hoop, 17-15. A technical on the St. Joe's head coach, Phil Martelli, kind of settled things down. The Flyers took over. Kane Dalabo bangs the three. Oliver Purnell still not uh, real comfortable with situation, but then Andy Metzler takes control. Drives to the baseline. That one even got the coach off the bench all fired up. And then Andy again kind of off balance, gets bumped, Shoots and scores. That was two of his big 10 points tonight. Then in the second half, Metzler to the hole. Guy's awesome off the first dribble. But the one guy that really was kind of the silent killer tonight for St. Joe's, big Mark Ashman. He was told to step it out tonight. He did with 18 points, and the Flyers roll past St. Joe's. Uh, coach just told me we needed to have a big game for these. Second half. So I didn't play much first half and just had to step it up. That's until we get needed a big offensive game. That's what I gave. You know, we get after people defensively and you know, which your offense feeds off that. You know, you get a steal here, you get a steal there, you get out and they get the crowd into it and yeah, you know, make up for you know some nights when you don't shoot it quite the way you want to. I told Mark beginning of the second round, like, I'm gonna go to you, so be ready. He set out in you know, the first half to the foul throw. And I told him at the beginning of the second round, like, be ready, I'm going to you, big fella. And he did. Ashman responds with 18. Ed Young, Tony Stanley, Andy Metzler. 30 points between them, 10 each. Flyers now two. The inside game was non-existent. Their outside shooting even more invisible. This is one to toss out and move on. At Rhode Island, a place they've never won. The Rams burst out 12-2 run. Preston Murphy on target to Lamar Odom. Lars playing catch-up right away. The comeback spark came from Andy Metzler. Five quick points off the bench gets UD back into it. Mark Ashman was troubled by the tough Rhode Island postman, but he delivered when asked. 13 today, Dayton down or within one, but the Rams spurt it again, up 11 and a half. They blow it open, out of the locker room. Odom was everywhere, or at least it seemed 26 points for the freshman. Flyers down by as many as 20, but they kept at it. Kane Dadabo with back-to-back -back threes. And the foul there. UD gets back inside 10, but no closer. Uncharacteristically, the Flyers out-rebounded by 20. And that's not good. Flyers fall 78-56, their biggest loss of the season.